today we are doing a broadcast on your life as the eight chord harp harp was a was an old musical instrument and i want to look at the life when a youth is 17 years old and track it from 17 to 43 so what happens at 17 uh, there was this young man whose father was famous in the town can we have the first slide whose father was the best known person a, a, a great nobleman of his town one of the young men answered so the king in that country had a problem problem was that he was getting increasingly jealous with anyone who comes anywhere near his stature he had been king for a long time and kings become old in their role they become despotic Uh, so there was a problem in the country and king behaved in a very irrational manner now there was a young man whose father was a, a great noble also and uh, he told the king i have a solution for your problem and what was the problem that the king was behaving irrationally and the king's counselor said uh, you need to get a good musician to put you to sleep and with little more sleep you might behave more rationally uh, so you know that was the advice so king thought nothing lost trying that advice uh, so uh, so king thought there's nothing lost trying that advice so he said get me the best musician available in the country then the young man who was whose father was serving in king's court said i know my friend Uh, he's from a town called Bethlehem, and his father is a famous man in that town called Jesse. Moment the young fellow said Jesse, uh, the king was all alive because Jesse was the most important person. And before uh, the the original capital of that uh, town was the uh, original capital of that town was uh, Bethlehem. So it was an important city. so important man in an important city so this young fellow recommended his friend which is a which, which is a very nice character uh, whereas this young man called david was 17 years old and his great father jesse had eight sons seven from his first wife who died and in his old age he had another fellow from one of his wrongs uh, from the he had a, another uh, another son the eighth son and eighth son was born when he was quite advanced in years so jesse was rather embarrassed about this young son he being 80 years old and the son was 17 years old but uh, so he never introduced his youngest son from a boy widow never introduced the youngest son to any friends any not to the king of course uh, so he put his younger son to look after his smelly sheep whereas all the other seven sons were uh, in the king's army and king's court and so on so david had a unfair deal by his own dad and he later would say even if uh, my mother forgot me my father thought i was an embarrassment that was the context of david's life but then there's a good shepherd that has given us a gift and that and that there's a saying which says uh, your kick gift will take you to the king there's a boy called dick whittington he had a gift how many of you know the gift he had was a cat and there was a bubonic plague at that time and everybody was uh, the, the, the flesh was very rare everybody was eating their dogs and cats but young dick whittington said i'm not going to kill my cat so when the king's house got infested with rats that's how the story goes Uh, young dick whittington said i have a cat oh king that can solve your problem so that's how dick whittington went into the king's parlor uh, anyway that's another story so uh, this young fellow is telling about david eight qualities behold i have seen a son of jesse so he had a great i am calling the eight courts he had a great heritage but in the heritage was a defilement that his father was not quite acknowledging the son 
I don't know whether you have gone through a crisis like this in your personal life. You are born to nobility, but the father did not give him confidence, competence, competence and the character he needed. It's the father who has to do that. Mom makes it safe every day. Father gives the next step, next stretch, boundaries, uh, confidence, competence, accreditation, 3A Fitch rating. Uh, so uh, second thing, the associations he had in the town of Bethlehem. Because if you want to be somebody, somebody, and come into royal favor, uh, the town to live with is Bethlehem. Because all the greats lived in Bethlehem. So first chord is heritage. Second chord is association. Now, if you were in a class with me, I, have, I would have got you to repeat this. First chord is heritage. Second is association. Uh, so this one's the association. Uh, your line of inheritance from your dad. Uh, then how much he empowers you in it, which is also important. You are not only born into nobility and greatness, you have to be trained into nobility and greatness. And as I said before, uh, mother makes you safe inside in your relationship. So intimacy, close relationships come from mom. If mom fails, you, you feel as if you're inside relationships, you're not confident about. But if dad is aloof, aggressive, abusive, alcoholic, sad to say, or just distant, uh, then you become not so confident in your external relationships. That might have been David's issue. But the good shepherd, God our father, had his eye upon David because there's no, when there's no father or mother to fully take care, uh, God takes care. That's God's sociology. So before Karl Marx came, God had his own sociology that he will take care of the widow, he will be on the side of the oppressor, he will be on the side of the destitute, uh, he will not allow the poor to be harassed. So that's that's God's social order. that's God's das capital. So associations. Uh, so in that town, that was the town to be with. So associations are whom you begin to, so your family is your first association, then your associates make you great. So what was the surrounding of Bethlehem? It was surrounded by enemy country. They had they were always at loggerheads or war with another nation next to a called Philistines. And so everybody in Bethlehem had to go through national training to equip for war at any time. Uh, but David was not given that opportunity. He was looking after his father's sheep. So for people who are uh, sort of, uh, what shall I say, with a feather down, God adopts them. Uh, so this is how I said it, beginning with your life. I searched the heavens when he was born. I preserved him for you. I put words into the mouth to preserve the child. So that's God working over time with you. When you have nobody else to work for you, but there's a gift of God in you that will take you to the king. So your table of life, your placement in life, the people that will come uh, will come your way if you allow the good shepherd to lead your way. Your senior that will adopt you and uh, make you his protege in a profession, vocation, work field, and your parallels and those who are junior to you. There are three generations there: senior, your peers, and the and and your junior. So life is about doing those three generations together. Those are your associations. And while in your mother's womb, your destiny is forming. So mom has to keep speaking to the child in the mother's womb. That's how your destiny is formed. So uh, here is chord number one. And if chord number one ruptures, what was chord number one rupturing? Father or mother not being there for you or not coaching you up properly, you know, not coaching you up properly. Yes, I'm trying to get the best advantage for the life. Uh, father and mother not coaching you up properly. Yes, that's better, I think. Uh, then there will be what are called leons. Leons are things that went wrong or things that became small in your life. You, you need to sort of know about these things because there are remedial measures. Otherwise, uh, you will not know the defects and the 
weakness of the structure, what structures in your life got weak, there are remedies because life is fair. Life is not unfair. Why is life fair? Because a good shepherd is in charge of our life. That's why life is fair. Uh, so amongst your associations, you, you need seniors who will take you up as protege. So in a world when the, the third generation wants to do things on their own, that's why 17 to 23 is very important. Uh, during that time, uh, a senior has to adopt you for your greatness. First senior, of course, is dad and mom, then a teacher, then, of course, the work field you choose, the professional field you choose. As I've always said, by between 17 and 24, you will get into your main professional field. That is important. By then 24 to 33 is your first fruits of your life. By 33, you will be hopefully married and your child will, first child will be about five years old. That's the landmark for 33. Then by 43, your first child will be 15 years old and you would have come to the a zenith of your success season with the table that with the Good Shepherd provided. Placement, people, and the portion, the provision. So your table may provide only for your family. That's okay if that's how your design works. If not, your table of uh, entrepreneurship, management, and skill can pr pr provide for Maybe 10 others. You have a work field, a workplace, your entrepreneurship, your managerial skill, and your technical skill providing for uh, uh, 10 more others. On the other hand, there may be people who are chairman of a company of 10,000. Their entrepreneur skill, not that they did it alone, but their entrepreneur skill, managerial skill, and the technical skill could accommodate, provide for make facilities for, think through, plan for uh, 10,000. So uh, you need to know uh, what, what your proportion is as time goes. So there is grace, there's gift, and there's a measure. Uh, so th those are coming from the good shepherd, the grace, the gift, and the measure. So you can be prosperous in which what you have been provided. So you need to keep tab now. One. Am I satisfied about what I got from dad and mom? Or is there a fracture there? Is there a discontentment there? Then you have to ask the question, is my discontentment, discontentment reasonable or unreasonable? Uh, because it, your assessment may not be right. They might have provided you everything, but you did not use it well. But that is important. Your heritage line of inheritance is important. Uh, if, it, it, if it passed on well, you're on your mark, you're set to run the race of life for a satisfactory reward. If not, as you, as you get to the mark, you feel as if there's an ankle lock. These are spiritual principalities. You, you always start late, late for interviews, late for work. Uh, you don't know time has gone. Uh, so that's a spiritual phenomenon. Man is not merely brain. Man is spirit. Man is conscious. Man is heart. Heart has all kinds of affections, but your conscience will tell you to balance it up. Then you have emotions and imagination. Imaginations can run, run high, but emotions must be able, must be schooled to match your imagination. Otherwise, you'll be always in a mood of you have, you have wings, but no muscle in the wings. So you know what I mean? You want to fly, but it doesn't get off. Uh, so these are issues of uh, how was your line of inheritance too? How were your associations? How are you with your siblings? How were you at school? How did you get on in the team? Did you play any sports? Was there any other extracurricular activity you were involved in? Those are, how have you done with your associations up to the age of 17? That's what you have to check on. Uh, so if your associations have not been good, then what happens is all those SQ, sociological quotient, uh, EQ, emotional quotient, uh, get damaged or get diminished, whereas your IQ may be very high. So life is not only about IQ. 
IQ, SQ, and EQ associations are important. Childhood friends you made. Friends at the age of 14 will affect you and influence you more than your parents. Yes. So you, you really, for this lecture, you have to take a pen and pencil and write it down. If you send me your WhatsApp, if you send a WhatsApp message, I can send you the slides. And then you can do homework yourself. I'm Dr. Lalit Mendis. My last post, substantive post was as a, as a Department of Pharmacology in the State Medical Faculty. Our WhatsApp number in our Empathic Learning Training Center is plus 9476-313-4800. Plus 94, that's Sri Lanka, 76313-4800. Please send a WhatsApp request for whatever clip you want. This is my 285th clip, Science and Reason. My, uh, I have an app, Golden Nuggets. You can download it free of charge from Apple Store or Google. And now we go to chords three and four. Yes, chords three and four. Skill and valor. Valor I'm using in a larger sense. Uh, so you will receive skill of hand on different lines. It may be music. It may be hospitality. Those are the more right brain things coming from the kinesthetic, acoustic, visual tracks. We have seven brain tracks. Empathic intuitive, empathic relational, linguistic, managerial, kinesthetic, acoustic, visual. I did a talk today. It's on my timeline. Uh, on those seven tracks, you can go through it. If not, I can send you the uh, WhatsApp, if you send me a WhatsApp request to 076-313-4800, I can send you the clips on, on, on those slides, seven brain tracks, how they serve you, how they grow, how you grow them, and how they decide what kind of work field and study field you will excel in. Uh, so chord number three is the skill of life. It was said of David, he had become skillful in two things with excellence. One was taking aim, taking aim with a slingshot. Because in the King's Brigade, those days, there were, uh, there were archers and there were fighters who used the slingshot. So uh, any young fellow who can get, get in qualified to the King's Brigade as a soldier with the slingshot or archer, they shoot from afar. Their life is safe and they are much sought after. So David practiced his slingshot every day. This is about how you become excellent in a skill. You have a gift, but you have to develop it to skillful, excellent level. So what he did was, this is a old story, but get the principles. What he said was, I will get the highest, I will get the last leaf on the last twig on the highest branch of the tallest tree. And he kept practicing. It was, it, he made the slingshot with leather and so on. It's wrapped around his hand. So he must have his, and he became ambidextrous. He did it with both hands and he could quickly switch off. So usually that brigade could shoot sharpshooters with both hands. Some with the bow, some with the slingshot. Uh, so uh, David practiced. People will see and recommendation will come about you to take you to high place before your king, before the king or, or the head of state or whatever, highest place when you develop your skill. Now that is skill. Valor is about character. So in the caste, C-A-S-K, there's character, there's attitude, there's skill, and there's knowledge. You have to develop all four. So if you are skillful and your attitude is no good, people will not like to recruit you. Nowadays, they recruit you more, not for IQ, but for skill how well you can get on with others. So if your skill is great and attitude is no great, not great, people will not recruit you. They are, they'll ask you questions and ask you to fill forms just to judge your attitude. So character, attitude, skill, and knowledge. And knowledge has to be upgraded all the time. Otherwise, the skill becomes outdated. So you may be extremely nice fellow in attitude, very well charactered, but if your skill is not upgraded by knowledge, you will not get higher placement in life. You will be mediocre. So this is the combination that goes between skill and valor. Uh, I use the term valor to mean how much, how much endeavor. You, I might have called it endeavor also, skill and endeavor. 
how much endeavor you put into your skill set. So you need to have a balance between the two. You may be very skillful, but not endeavoring, you get nowhere. Well, you will be, uh, you will in times past, uh, you, you may found found that something, I told you, ankle lock pulls you backward. Now you will move forward without effort. You will pave the way to make others to come forward also. That is part of your skill set of the skill of getting others to run alongside you. So your destiny is not going, is going to be uh, shaped not only by seniors, but others who espouse your cause and are running alongside you. They are your peers, but they have found greatness in you. So many people blame seniors saying they did not do that, they did not do the other, but you check yourself how you are doing with your peers. Do they think you are worth supporting? Then of course, your juniors whom you come alongside and help them along, that makes the tri-generational run for life. So between 17 and 23, it's mostly about your peers. Then between 24 and 33, it's mostly about your senior. Between 33 and 43, it's about your juniors, how you coach them. And beyond 43, you are the senior, so you're all the time. So up to 43 is your success season. You are fruitful, you have multiplied, and you have filled two thirds of your life. So up to 33, one third of your life portion, up to 43, two thirds of your life portion. Then next one third of your life is about getting others into their uh, fulfillment and fullness of portion. That's how you have a peaceable society. You would have contributed uh, to that, that peaceable society in which you live. Uh, now, everyone blames COVID. We need to have a plan how to come out of COVID. So this is the eight chord harp you're going to play. Harp is your life, the best sum, the best skill. Uh, so David took aim with the slingshot till one day he got that last leaf on the last twig of the highest branch of the tallest tree. Then he also practiced the harp. You know, music makes brain brilliant when you do the music, when you make the music, when you play the music. And uh, the stringed instruments make brain more brilliant. I can't go into all the digital details today. If you send me a WhatsApp number, I will send you the WhatsApp clips for this. Uh, so, well, you will be bold beyond what you think. In times past, you were pulling back. Now you will move forward without it. You will pave the way to make others to come forward. This will propel you pass forward. Now the next two chords, chords five and six. Battle and prudence. So there's a time to surge forward. There's a time to take a respite. That's what it means. So chord number five, the advance, the challenge. Some people take challenges all the time. Some people shy, shy away from challenges. For them, everything looks like a challenge. So you need to draw a graph and say, what is a challenge to me? Meeting new people, uh, new projects, are they a challenge to me? Because without taking challenge, you can't grow tall. Without taking challenge, you can't um, advance. But you also need to keep a check on prudence. So taking challenge and prudence must be balanced. Prudence is wise, wisdom and speech together. Yes, you know how to break the bone with gentle word. You know how to disarm the garrulous. So be bold. It's a word of grace that will arm you. Use it again and again. Angry people will get on with each other when you speak because you have a gift of prudent, wise, gracious speech. Uh, keep it going. Ask for it. Uh, so that, that's the balance between going forward time and, and consolidating time. No general goes forward all the time. He goes forward, takes some territory, consolidates the territory. Life is like that. Now I come to an important, important uh, section, uh, cause seven and eight. Cause seven and eight. Good presence will be your charm. So haste 
makes waste and don't uh, your good presence involve your involves your sexual purity which you must keep keep safe for your one time one's choice life partner uh, so for a young boy of 17 what i have to say is there is a shape that good shepherd your designer has put into you and you begin to feel the shape that your life partner should be generally for boys after 21 but for girls from about 18 they begin to feel it so girls are usually about 3 to 4 years ahead of the boy in their uh, inside shape you have to know that uh, so uh, so generally by about 24 is the time that a boy begins to say this begins to identify properly this may be the shape in my heart that is looking for its other side in the beginning it is said from the first man's side the woman was made so now also there is the other side the better half you are looking for you begin to feel the shape of your better half with a man when he is about 24 with a girl even from 18 she gets a sense of whom she may want to have as a better half yes so good presence will be a charm strength that makes access Uh, enhancing your presence making doors open wide people will hear uh, that they that they ought to favor you that's that's a presence uh, that's a favor of god the good shepherd working for you the other side of it is how you choose your better half at the right time so a boy making decisions early may be unwise you have to wait till you recognize the better half what the shape of your better half should be and then by that time you are qualifying in a field may not be fully but you are qualifying you you get a rough idea about the stretch of your life for the next 14 years or so as i said 17 to 23 23 to 33 that's how life goes so those are the eighth card is this factor of giving enough room in your life for the good shepherd to have interaction with you that's the decision you have to make whether you can do your life yourself or whether you want the promises of the good shepherd help of the good shepherd counsel of the good shepherd to work in your life he promises to give you a fair life portion he calls it green he says i will give you resources in those the next resource the next resource he says i will give you straight paths he says i will give you time for recuperation when things go wrong i will help you in it uh, then he says i will i have prepared a table if you look for your placement people and the provision with me i can help you if not we are on our own trial and error but there's one thing that you can't do trial and error on that is your life partner no sexual thrills to be tried because they uh, harm you for life is very difficult to recover from uh, uh, inappropriate sexual thrills and sexual damage and the digital screen all the time pushes you towards it because the digital screen sets you up for bottom up regulation try and see sitannata para panala balan jump before you think yeah uh, we were told paninnata para sitala balan now the digital screen says jump before you think so i did a uh, talk on this in the morning so please take that clip number 285 i think this will be clip number 286 whatever it is my morning clip did the digital part uh, evening man i am not doing the digital part uh, so the good shepherd factoring with you helping you uh, you have to make a uh, choice about that whether he you would like him in your life he especially helps when you are defeated and down he especially helps in writing wrong meaning putting it right so when you are correcting your uh, young followers kids you must give the speak to them improvement as i said my talk in the afternoon is completed by my talk in the morning please listen to that also if you need the clip send me a whatsapp to whatsapp number 0763134800 at the age of 18 i became first in the island 
in the A-level examination, botany, zoo, chemistry, physics. At that time, I didn't believe in a good shepherd. I was a confirmed atheist because of my limited knowledge on the theory of evolution. You know, when you finish A-level and you become first in the island, you think you know everything. But thankfully, I went through some experiences and my life took a different attitude because I found when my brain got brighter, my heart got tougher. That's what happened. Uh, so in, I entered Columbia Medical Faculty and every exam I was batched up. But by and by, I began to see that the Good Shepherd has a great contribution for my life. I suggest it to you also. Now, very quickly, five areas in which you need to observe whether you are damaged. Yes, first one, morals. Uh, how do I, uh, how can I see the screen better, Eddie? First one, morals. Uh, don't lose your moral authority to another. Be careful of people who abuse and man manipulate you. Uh, there, is a, there is a moral fiber, a uh, moral fracture uh, can be very harmful to you. In that context, I took, uh, spoke to you about uh, misadventures in sexual threats. Second one is wealth and a spirit of poverty. Some people always feel they will not do well in life. Uh, they, they, have a, they carry a spirit of mediocrity. You need to uh, attend on that. You need to say, how do I become excellent? That's why the Good Shepherd says, I give you a portion of life full and I give you the next resource and the next resource. I give you paths to follow, paths of righteousness and rectitude. And I give you uh, times of restoration where you can do catch up. Uh, he's the one who gives us a second chance and a third chance. Otherwise, life can become very hard. Third one is health. You need to take care whether in your heredity and in your genes, whether there are identified diseases, diabetes, hypertension, glaucoma, they usually turn up at the age of 40. So coming to 40, it's good to have the good shepherd in your life. But I'm recommending, as it happened to me, when you're 18, entering into the world's field, so to say, though you are in your family, looked after by your parents, by, eight, by when you're 18, you have to enter the world's field and carve a niche for yourself with the help of others, of course. So check, keep a check on the health, especially the health issues that are waiting to pop up at the age of 40. Then relationships, fractured relationships will hurt you. So keep your friends. The proverb says, keep even your father's friends. What worked to your father? Maybe good friends will work for you. Last one is emotional health. Don't be unstable. A man's spirit will endure trouble, but a wounded spirit, who can endure? So wounds of the spirit is a little different from wound of the body. I said man is spirit, conscious and heart in good balance, conscious and heart, then imagination and emotions in good balance. Then finally you have the computer, the cognitive brain. Uh, so that's where I want to stop. Uh, the eight cards, the Two, two sets of four chords working together. Can I do a little, just a quick uh, replay of the chords, Eddie? Yes, first one, your line of inheritance and then your associates. That's the first set. Next, next three and four, uh, the skill and the endeavor working together. Next one, five and six, the challenge, taking challenge and advance, and being prudent, wise in speech and in consolidating. Seven and eight, the presence and your other half. Eight, the role of the Good Shepherd in your life. Thank you for listening. Next Saturday, also 3 p.m., we meet again.